Nessa girl, in the spirit of Black Panther, I kept this thing on, but I took it from a crossing guard strap, and I made me an old nasty warrior top with my red lipstick on. Because there's some things going on, and we're going to have to talk about it. Is it me, or was this the most jam-packed, ashen-packed, messy-ass episode of Housewives this season? Baby, them hoes had it going on, and we finna talk about it. Starting with them, Marlo trying to mimic Candy and Marlo bringing up that etiquette shit. Let me tell you something. Marlo, Candy was absolutely right. You are the last goddamn person to try to talk to anybody about damn etiquette. And it felt like to me that Marlo, this whole episode was just trying too hard. It's almost as if somebody said... There's a real housewives handbook. Pick a fight with somebody, get them to respond to you crazy, and that's how you stay on the show. It really felt like Marlo was just unnecessarily coming at Candy. Um, Nene had me dying laughing on that bus when she gave that rundown of Kim and all them damn medical conditions. Bitch, I holler. Then you know Nene asked she can't speak worth the damn, and when she called it an electric stroller, Bitch, I felt electric stroller. Did, <laughs> what is the proper name for that? Is it a scooter or electric wheelchair? Mama called it an electric stroller. I fell the hell shit. Kim got all them goddamn kids around and around there. Plus, she got a little money. The bitch just might have a damn electric stroller. Eva confessional look was everything. And I'm going to tell y'all something. Y'all know I don't fuck with all them bundles. I hate when a bitch got a full head of hair, but it's something about pregnancy, that color, and Eva having on that flowy top. Mama look real ethereal. Ethereal, ethereal, yes, I'm so ethereal, I'm so surreal, I can't be comprehended, except by my permission, yes, Black Power, Black Panther, that was a little bit of Nikki Giovanni from Ego Trippin', but we gonna keep it right on going. I thought it was nice that Candy extended the tour situation to Nene, but let's face it, Candy wasn't doing it because, out of the goodness of her heart, or because she thought it was nice. Candy did it because of adding that RHOA flair to the escape tour, who was now in the Bravo family, it just made good sense. My question is, though, did Nene do a lot of dates? I can't, I can't remember. I don't remember hearing any. Did she do any dates? Y'all drop that in the comments and let me know if you saw Nene when you saw Escape. Just kicking. Or did they kick her off? Um, oh, Shamia. Shamia, I ain't never have to give you none up until now. Shania, you always kind of annoyed my asshole. But not because it was something that you did, because Bravo was always trying to force you on us, okay? And so now that you've been around three or four years and you're kind of like, you like Marlo, you're the tag along friend that's that, you know, don't come on on the opening credits, but you a friend of the show. And we like you for whatever it's worth. I need you to just be that. I, I don't need you there trying to do the work of the other ladies and upstaging folks because... When you threw that lesbian shit out to Eva, so are you, you know, are you a lesbian? Uh, did you go with Missy Elliott? What the fuck does it matter? So if she would have answered yes, what does that change? It's what I call useless information. Now that you've got the information, you can't do nothing with it. It changes nothing. It was tacky. It was abrupt. And Shamia, you're better than that. I can tell that's not your character because you haven't acted like that in the past. And you were the queen of... You know, being able to call out somebody when they do some tacky shit like you did. But see, them people must have told you work ain't honest and you needed to pay the bills. Matter of fact, you don't even need to pay the bills. You got a scamming ass African. You got a you got a fraudian African. You got a fraud based African. Um, fraud and all over Atlanta. Uh, shit, fraud at your house and Portia house from what the people say. Nonetheless. You don't even need the coin. So don't let them people get in your ear to be doing all that crazy backwards shit. Well, I guess they said, bitch, we paid for your flight over here. We're going to have to justify why you here to the shareholders. Uh, but I just didn't like that. Candy finally got a good joke in. Now listen, and it's just true tea. Candy personality is dry as fuck, okay? And 
that's not a negative. I'm not coming at her. It's just different strokes for different folks. Everybody don't have the same brand of humor. Everybody don't have the same brand of chill. Now, Candy is real chill, but you know, her, she is very monotone. She give you one energy. Then she might go up when she laugh. Then she come back to her baseline. And that's okay. And I get why she was slightly offended by Marlo because when you're just living and breathing and being and people are finding fault with you in your resting state, yeah, that would annoy my asshole too. Uh, but what I do like is every now and again, Candy will get a good joke in because she can't, she can't read to save her life. But she got Cynthia ass together when she said, well, hopefully uh, y'all will know I slept with Cynthia because she'll be defending me the way she defend Will. I know that's right. Cynthia with her wishy-washy defense. Um, Cynthia, you got under my skin when you snapped that Porsche and basically told her, can you just basically stop talking because the conversation is between me and Eva. And it was like, ooh. And I didn't mind. I didn't mind because you was telling her the truth. Like, girl, I, I don't even want to hear what you got to say. But three seconds later, Nene came behind, orchestrated the conversation, took the conductor stick, interjected her to whatever, whatever, asking you all kind of interrogating questions, and you didn't serve her that same energy that you served Portia. Now, you know, and that's, that, that just looked a little odd for me. Why was it okay for Nene to chime in? But I guess if I had to ask you that to your face, your rebuttal would be that you are predisposed to being annoyed with Portia because Portia is always coming at you on some, you know, somebody said this, what they said about your man, this, that, and the third. But I'm going to tell you something. Portia has grown intellectually a lot since being on this show. Because the season one and two of Portia would not have been smart enough nor articulate enough to say, I don't know why we talking about the Peter stuff. We talking about this situation. You want to bring that up and tie that in and bring that up. No, 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 baby. Stay on task. We talking about this. That showed a lot of growth and maturity on Portia's intellect. And I appreciated her for that because Cynthia was trying to deflect and all over the damn place. And it was like, girl, okay, yeah, I did say that. And yeah, I did say that over there. But bitch, we ain't talking about me right now. We talking about your ass. Um... I hollered. Who was that that said licking balls was too close to the ass? That was Portia. Now, Portia, you need to grow up. That's about why your ass can't keep no man. And quiet as it's kept, the one you had like getting his ass licked anyway. So, hey, Cordell. So, bitch, you familiar. Cut your bullshit. See, what it is is Portia is traumatized. That's what it is. That man had her over there eating that puss cake. And now... <laughs> I got my red lipstick on. He had you over there eating that bujana and Portia traumatized, so she don't want to be around nothing that resembles no asshole. I know that's right. Stop in the name of love. You better stop, girl. Um, Shamia, don't you never in your damn life tell nobody else you a professional dancer. Bitch, your dance moves was so basic. Your PK turns was horrible. Your layout was flat. You, 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 it just, and, and granted, I know you was just playing around, but bitch, this is what you do for a living. Whether you do, well, keeping Africans is what you not do for a living. That's what you used to do for a living, to trap the African, and I ain't mad with you. But you never know when you might have to revert back to your old bag of tricks. So I'm going to need you to freshen up your skills or whatever and keep them fresh because these Africans, bitch, they will fraud the general public and they will fraud your ass. That man will fuck up everything associated with your social security number and be giving your money, your assets, and your everything to his real wife over in Ghana. So just stay refreshed and up to date on your dance skills. Um, listen, correct me when I'm wrong and acknowledge me when I'm right. Straight up, no chaser, relationship aside, Candy ass was dead ass motherfucking wrong for taking that wrong. Am I right or am I right? Like, I, 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 you know, it just goes without saying that the host gets the best room. Okay? And I am curious to know why Candy did not surrender the room to Cynthia. I'm guessing Candy's underlying issue was she didn't want to give in to Nene. And Candy has this thing about you know, going out of her way to let the world and to let Nene know, Nene, you're not the boss of me. 
I really sense that that's what a lot of it was when she was like, I ain't changing. I think had Cynthia talked to Candy, it would be fine. But the simple fact that it was coming from Nene, Candy shut down. Um, Nene, you was a shit star in this situation because the reality of the situation is Cynthia was impressed about it. Okay, she was, Cynthia did not make an issue of it. She was like, girl, I'm here to travel and have fun. It wasn't until you went down there, gassed her up, and then you came up there and you being a damn spokesperson. If anything, Cynthia should have been the mouthpiece. Um, and quite frankly, Nene, I, I get you advocating for Cynthia, but it really felt disingenuous. It felt like your ass was more concerned with getting the room and you was just going to hop on Cynthia coattail to get it. And um, you brought up the mature, you know, the more mature girls. So in essence, Nene, what you were trying to do was assert some sort of dominance or status over them girls because of your age. But Candy them got your ass right together because they said, okay, bitch, any other time somebody mentioned anything about your age or you being older, it's a hot spot for you. You get offended. You get mad. But when it's convenient for you to pull an AARP, AARP card, then you all find it well with it. Which one is it? And like when you was going off about your age, you really showed one of your biggest insecurities when rocking with this group of girls. Um, Candy was not here for Marlo. And quite frankly, I wasn't either. Uh, Marlo kept interjecting herself in situations that didn't have nothing to do with her. And it's like, girl, I mean, don't you got some shit in your Amazon basket that you can check out on somebody else's credit card with or whatever the fuck you be over there doing on your phone and in your computer? Like, don't you got a shipment of damn stolen coach bags coming in from somewhere that you need to be checking on and doing inventory? Take some inventory of your woman and your glory. Leave the best things behind. Y'all need to leave that hole behind the next time. Um, when Marlo called Candy a Mongol, um, that shit was hilarious. Marlo and Nene can both use a Rosetta Stone, Jocelyn Hernandez edition. As a matter of fact, they should do a four-part special called Teach These Hoes How to Speak, Coming to America, Returns. Jocelyn, Marlo Hampton, and Nene Brad May Leaks with the electric stroller. That shit would be a hit. Um... Sheree and Portia. Sheree is so void of a storyline and she just resorted to being messy. And I ain't mad with you, mama. It's a job and if it's going to keep you staying on the show and keep the lights on, I'm all for it. But y'all calling Kim, like, Sheree, you not tired of that shit yet? Like, that lady ain't even really your friend like that. And then Portia, like, you running down... And telling what Nene said to Kim on the phone. The shit was just messy. And what I don't understand, Portia, is that you be the one who be carrying back mess. And then you also be the one to uh, be the figurehead and speak on the mess when it hit the fan. Now, bitch, you the one that went and told Kim all the damn shit. You should be the last one at the table reading the damn text out loud. That was the same thing like when y'all had went glamping and you was like, who said it? Who said it? And it was your ass that said it. Like, I'm sorry, Sheree, you don't have a mouth problem and you ain't a bone collector. The only issue is ain't nobody slapped your ass hard enough yet because this was unnecessary mess that didn't have to be. And Kim, you was a low down son of a bitch if I ain't never seen one. The fact that you were hoarding pictures of her in a handicapped spot and moreover videos in people's house, like Cynthia said, for Mad Day, that's some low down shit. You were never genuine. You were never sincere. Come in, who thinks to do that? The proper thing to have done was pull Nene to the side and be like, girl, I know you got a house full of guests and the camera's here. You got some bugs in your bathroom. Not take pictures and hold it for when a bitch do this. But to Kim's defense, I guess she figured I know that these hoes is going to come for me with me returning. And so I just need a little something, something to, 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 to ward their ass off if needs be. I'm going to tell you one thing about it, though. 
what that shit did should make any of them think twice about really coming at her crazy because ain't no telling what else the fuck Kim got stored in her phone. Uh, that was some old crafty cracker shit. That old crafty rich white woman shit, honey. Um, the age thing with Nene upset her. The house thing really upset her. Uh, and Nene let y'all hoes know. Ain't none of y'all hoes got no pool. I got a pool that was bugs from my pool house. I kind of didn't like where Nene was going with that whole tone of conversation. Basically saying, bitch, I live in better houses than all of y'all. I think she should have directed those comments to Kim. But Nene been in the game long enough and she got it. We sitting at the table, everything going well. Everybody get this text. And now y'all hoes trying to embarrass me? Not today, bitch. Not today. And she cleared shop and wrecked shop. Y'all, this was a messy ass episode of Housewives, and it was some real feelings in here, real hurts. Okay, girl, this was good. The people tell me Mary the Medicine is real good too. You know, I was in Wakanda this weekend, so I didn't get to see it. I'm gonna get in here and watch it as soon as I upload this. But girl, as always, that's a girl. Be sure to hit the like button on this video right now and subscribe and hit that little bell so whenever I call, you can answer. Don't you know when love calls? What you better do? You better answer. Y'all want to see this blouse I got on? Yes, honey. Sick, man, bitch. Fishy, bitch. Anyway, that's a girl. I'll call you later. Back.